I think we'd, we can all agree that this is some good looking grub, all right? It looks pretty darn tasty. I wish my fruit and vegetables came out and my fridge looking like that. However, what I really want to focus on here is diet and nutrition in a more general sense. And I want to focus as initially, initially on energy. So when we talk about energy and energy requirements, guys, I want you to think in the following ways. Men, in the most general sense, they require in the region of 2,500 kilocalories, that's a unit of energy or heat uh, per day, okay? So that is 2,500 for men. Um, for women, the number, and remember these are averages, many men and women will be different to this, not least athletes for that matter. And with women, we're generally saying that the average requirement would be in the region of 2,000 kilocalories per day. So we've got kind of an energy requirement there for uh, the people in our society. And I want to take that a touch further. And I want to talk about energy balance before we get into specific foodstuffs here. Energy balance. Okay, so energy balance. So bearing in mind what I've just said there, we, we would like to see a situation where energy in, energy in equals energy out now just reflect on that a second let's imagine that the person we're thinking of is i don't know female and she's the average female which i realize no one is what we're arguing is that if that person takes on a, a, an average of 2000 kilocalories per day and spends 2000 kilocalories per day this is going to lead to numerous things but one of them is going to be steady weight Okay, that person is neither going to gain or lose weight over time. Okay, now we've got a different relationship we could look at where we could say energy, I'm sure you can figure this out for yourself, but energy in, if energy in is greater than energy out, guess what I'm going to be saying? So we're taking um, in more energy through our food than we are spending through things like body function, movement, various other things, then what we're going to find here is that this person over time, not not you know all in one go, is going to gain weight. Okay, So this is an unhealthy balance because energy in is greater than energy out. Now, over years and years and years, it could be this exact balance that leads to something like obesity, which we know is a health uh, risk factor for all kinds of conditions, including type 2 diabetes and various other things. So that's a negative relationship. But the other relationship that is, is also negative is the exact opposite of that, okay? Where we might find we've got energy, where we've got energy in being less than energy out, okay? So this might happen in a couple of scenarios. One, someone's dieting. Two, someone's not taking enough energy. Three, someone's massively up to their kind of activity levels, for example. This person is going to lose weight again over time remember this is not going to happen all in one go they're going to lose weight over time so that energy balance is something i'd really encourage you to reflect on but finally guys before we kind of go any further and we really need to obviously stress these points we'll come back to these images as reference <coughs> excuse me i want to talk to you about different kinds of nutrients all right so within our diet what different things can we or even should we be taking on and i want to start in a really obvious place in our diet we want to be consuming carbohydrates now you guys already know a great deal about carbohydrates assuming you've studied those elements of your biology courses for example you probably tell me more than i'm going to put on the screen here but i'm going to make sure that you've got the fundamentals here for your p courses all right so first of all carbohydrates they are a form of energy by far the most important role that carbohydrates play is as an energy uh, source importantly they can be stored okay but there's a problem. They can only be stored in small quantities. Now, if you want to get technical, um, carbohydrates are stored as glycogen in the muscle and more in the liver, okay? But the quanti... Quan hang on a second. I sometimes talk at the same time as I'm writing something else. Quantities. Come on, James, get a grip. In small quantities, all right? So that's what, that's what we're expecting to happen there. But the important thing is I want to stress this energy. This is really important for activity, of course. So 
we've got this notion that carbohydrates are going to power movement they're going to power activity that's really important my second group of nutrients i'm going to talk to you about are proteins again structures i reckon you know quite well from your biology studies okay you might know about amino acid chains for example let's put that in let, let me remind you of that amino acids okay so they are they are, they are chain proteins are chains of amino acids in unique shapes we're not going to get into it here but most importantly for us as performers they're involved with growth now think about growth in two ways you could be talking about you know a child growing you know, a child getting taller a child getting broader it could be that kind of growth but it could also be the adaptation process you know somebody undertakes ongoing physical training and their body starts to adapt physiologically uh, amino acids are going are to be the source of that growth and we also find that they are a source of repair so any damaged tissues and again this could be exercise based such as muscle damage from intense anaerobic work that's going to happen now the other point is that they provide a small amount of energy for activity so way 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 less than carbohydrates but they do contain a little bit of energy as well so that can be released and utilized uh, for movement in smaller proportions lovely let's round the circle and talk about the other kind of macro level nutrient which is fat now again you guys have probably got a very good working understanding as fat as a substrate and you probably know i'm going to chuck the word in here you probably know they're called lipids and you probably can know you you guys probably know your glycerols from your fatty acids good lean on that knowledge but the key things i want you to be aware of in this subject is that they are a source of energy and of course we do store it the fat can be stored under the skin as subcutaneous fat you know everybody has that to different levels different depths um, but fats are also used for insulation but let's be really clear guys low intensity exercise is driven by fat is driven by lipid okay um that sort of very low intensity fat burning type work so that's that's actually a useful thing to be aware of final things from me i want you to be aware of minerals loads and loads of examples of these but minerals uh, we could be talking about minerals for bone growth you probably know the min the mineral there's actually more than one but you probably know the mineral involved here right it's calcium great and you also can be aware of minerals for things like oxygen transport Okay, oxygen transport. Uh, uh, we would take on iron, for example, to form those heme those heme groups on red blood cells. Okay, so that's a really important point as well. So we've got minerals for different functions. And finally, guys, from me today, we we want to talk. Let me put it in a bluey, nice bluey color for this one. We want to talk. I mean, it's not blue, is it? Water, but we tend to represent it as blue. I suppose because of seawater. I suppose um, water and water is really important to prevent dehydration. Okay, now again, I'm not going to get into osmosis and what happens to animal cells uh, when fluid leaves cells. You guys have already studied that, um, but it prevents dehydration. Okay, therefore, it's really important for activity, not energy for activity, but the maintenance of healthy systems to benefit from activity. Now, the only thing I want to finish off with here, guys, I want to take us down to this image of the eat well plate and just give you some examples of where we might get things from. So let's take our carbohydrates first. Well, we get them from bread, from potatoes, from grains, uh, from where are we, from pasta and so on. So that's where we get our carbs from. Um, our proteins, we get them from fish, we get them from meat, uh, we also get them from certain lentils and pulses and legumes. There's some more meat there, tin tuna in this case. Um, our fats we get from dairy, for example. We also get from certain um, certain types of food, you know, things like red meat, for example, uh, that we get fat from. But we'd also get it from this. Now, this is sort of kind of quite negative fat. I'm not going to get into saturated and trans fats here. Um, but let's just be aware that, you know, we're going to eat, maybe eat these as treats, but they should not be overly regular. Um and so on and um, what have i not included i've mentioned proteins I've mentioned carbs i mentioned fats water obviously I'm up here though we do extract water from various plants just be aware of that and what have i not mentioned <laughs> i've completely oh minerals well look m minerals exist in all kinds of formats um but particularly in plants are really important we take minerals from plants you know you might remember from biology that plants literally um absorb mineral ions from the soil right so that that's an interesting link but also we we, we extract minerals as well from um, animal products too it's worth being aware of those here um good stuff thanks very much